Hi everyone, my name is Tyler, and I have a problem. Sound designers work with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of files a day. So having a system that keeps these files organized is paramount to having an efficient workflow. Before we get started, if you have enjoyed these videos and want to support the channel, head on over to my website at aftertouchaudio.com where we have recorded a bunch of custom sound effects that you can use in any of your projects. And if you'd like to see more sound design videos like this, consider hitting that like and subscribe button, which will help me spend more time making content like this for everyone. When it comes to storage, you really only have three options, and that is SSDs, hard drives, and RAID drives. And depending on what you're doing, each drive will have its own benefits and drawbacks. Keep in mind here, I'm talking strictly from an audio standpoint. These are not guidelines to follow if you're doing anything with video. SSDs are very expensive and you don't really get the benefit of what you're paying for. The only time I'd really recommend SSDs is when you're doing stuff for live playback, like your operating system, your DAW, your plugins, or contact libraries, or things that you will be playing back with a MIDI keyboard. Hard drives are the best option to store your sound effects library, but there's one specific spec you need to pay attention to, and that is drive RPM. Make sure that you get a drive that spins at 7200 RPM, as anything slower than that should really only be used as a backup drive. Now, there are a bunch of different types of RAID, but the one that I usually use is RAID 0 and RAID 5. RAID 0 is for speed, and RAID 5 is more for my redundancy, so it will go ahead and take multiple drives and stripe the data across all of them, so that way if I lose a drive, I can always recover all my data. So what ones do I use? Well, all of them really. SSDs I use for my main computer's boot drive, as well as hosting all of my VSTs, my DAW, and anything that I'm playing back live. I use two systems of RAID, one for RAID 0, which will go ahead and encapsulate my entire sound effects library, and then I use another RAID 5 system that I back up my RAID 0 to, so that way I can go ahead and have redundancy uh, for my hard drives. And then I use hard drives that spin at a slower RPM, for anything like backups of older projects and stuff like that that I don't need anymore and I'll just store them on those. So when it comes into actually organizing your library, starting with your finder is the best place to start. I keep things as simple as I can so I have it broken up into a couple of different folders. One being my purchase libraries, my recorded sound effects, sounds to go through, my personal sound effects library, and my contact libraries. I have a couple of other smaller folders here which are things that are specific to certain applications or certain projects. But for the most part, these five folders here are the ones that I access the most. So the way I organize my purchase libraries is a little bit different. I don't like a lot of subfolders. Like I really don't, I viciously hate them. It is just a rabbit hole that you just go down and you can just never get out of. So what I do is I actually go ahead and rename each library with the name of the manufacturer at the front. So as you can see here, Alex Knickerbocker underscore ambiences. Alex Knickerbocker underscore Foley. And if you scroll down, you can see I've renamed all the Boom Library stuff in one folder. That's the way that I like to organize my stuff, I, but really just find a system that works for you and this will be fine. The way I organize my personal library, however, is a little bit different. So when I come into here, you can see that I have it organized by category. I have Acid, Alarms, um, Broadcast, Buttons, uh, Channel Tests, which just contain um, the 5.1 to Quadra to 7.2, all that stuff. Things like Creeks, Creatures, Creature Foley, Dogs, Doors, all of my elemental stuff, so like Earth, Electricity. What I will do is I will actually link this here in the description below, so if you want to use the file hierarchy that I have, you can go ahead and download that and use it yourself. Or again, just find a system that works for you, That's, that is all that matters. I don't use Finder all that much, um, but I do like to keep the Finder as organized as possible. So when I want to go ahead and just organize my library before I bring it into my database manager, then I can go ahead and do that. Now there are a lot of database managers out there, some of them being Explore, Soundly, Soundminer, and Soundcube, just to name a few. I personally use Soundminer because there are a couple features in there that I absolutely abuse. Also spent so much time organizing my library that it's just impossible for me to make the switch. But again, they will all essentially do the same thing. Okay, so this is Soundminer. And I have Soundminer broken down into a couple of different databases. One for my sound effects, one for my vehicles, one for my ambiences, one for all of my sounds, and one for RAM. So as you can see here, each database is broken down into playlists. and each sound can be attached to more than one playlist, but boy, do I have a lot of playlists. Playlists enable me to go ahead and have a quick granular search on something. So if I go ahead and just, for example, I wanna create something like an earthy impact, I can scroll down here to my elements, I can find my earth playlist, I can then come up here and lock my search term, and I can just type impact, and now I'm only going to get earth-related impacts 
within this search result. So what if I want to refine the search even further? Well, because now I have impact and I have earth, let's just say I want to go ahead and refine this down to sand. So now I'm specifically getting sand impacts. Now let's say I found a particular sound that I like and I want to find multiple variations of, or I just want to explore the library itself. What I can then do is come over here to the artwork panel and just go ahead and click on, for example, Bonson, and now I have all of these sand related impact sounds from this library. Now if I want to go ahead and just see what other earthy options that this library has, I can just go ahead and just delete sand. And now I have anything that has earth related to the search result. You can see how quickly this system gets really easy to find stuff, especially when you want to go ahead and do stuff like creature stuff. So for example, if I come up here, I want to find all of my cat related samples. So here's a list of all of my cat related samples. And if I wanted to, for example, just find, I don't know, specifically a Tomcat, here is all of my Tomcat sounds. Or if I want to just go ahead and just find, for example, cat growls, I can just go growl. And here's all of my cat growls. But if I want something bigger, I have a separate playlist for bigger cats. Here's my playlist for all my big cats, which is like tigers, um, lions, and all that other fun stuff. And then I type growl. I have a different set of samples that come back rather than just being small cats. And again, I have it organized from swines to rodents to large mammals. Get as granular as you would like or go as uh, generic as you like. I broke down the elements because it was really easy. I broke down the creatures because it was really easy. But having a system like this really speeds up my workflow. Now, if that wasn't enough, that's just the sound effects side of things. So if I come into my ambience folder, for example, if I'm working on a feature film and all I'm supposed to do is cut ambiences, this is just the database I look at. I don't even look at the rest of the libraries because I don't really need them. Or if I want just a specific car buy for a sound effects cut, I'll just go to my vehicles playlist. But as you can see here, I have the playlist broken down into exterior battle stuff, beaches, bird miscellaneous, canyons, constructions, crowds, deserts, extreme weather, all of these are exterior ambiences, and then down here I have the interior ambiences. And then I have two folders for Walla. One is just generic Walla, and one is safe Walla. And safe Walla doesn't have any English in it. The only one that really note here is the QP uh, playlist for exterior. And that is essentially just my favorite all-time libraries that I tend to go to, and they just live in there. The next place I have is cars, and this one was really tricky to get right and organize it to the point where I can find things really quickly. And the best way I found to organize vehicles specifically is by doing them by cylinder. So I have cylinders 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. And if you go into any of these folders, you'll see that I have a list of libraries that are just V8s. So if you scroll down, let's say I'm looking at, for example, I'm looking at um, doing a pickup truck and I don't know all the names of the pickup trucks or I don't know what they are, I will actually go ahead and Google most of these here and I'm certainly in the midst of replacing all of the pro sound effects stuff with images of those cars because what I can then do is scroll down here and just be like, oh, I just need a pickup truck. Well, there's my Ford F-150. And boom, there's all my Ford F-150 sounds. Those will work for the scene that I'm working on. Or if I come into a four cylinder car, I can then just look at the picture, see what I need to uh, grab there, find a car that's similar in make, model, size, and engine, and it will work for that scene. And beauty about that being is, let's say I pick uh, this guy here, which is the Volvo uh, XC90, there's all the samples for it. And I can go ahead and cut exclusively from this library to go ahead and cut into my film or my picture or whatever I need to do. So I use a combination of playlists, metadata, and album artwork in order to go ahead and find sounds incredibly quickly. The last major database I have here is RAM. And RAM's a bit of an, a weird one. And I really only use RAM for when I'm going ahead and wanting to embed metadata into libraries that either I'm releasing or libraries for my personal collection. I will then go ahead and drag them into the RAM because when, the, when I close SoundMiner, it deletes everything. Now, I would not be able to find things quickly without metadata. It is the most important part to doing a library right 
And it is something that if you take five minutes to do it, it saves you hours in the in the actual sound design process. So if I buy a library or if I record a library and it doesn't have metadata, I will add it immediately. And I use the UCS uh, standard. So that is something where it is just a, basically an agreed upon standard for metadata for all, from all sound designers. And that is always getting updated and stuff like that. But it is something that if you look at and you understand, it is something that is so powerful to finding sounds. Anyways, I hope this has helped you guys. If you have any questions about organizing your library or anything about hardware or software or, or anything like that, just please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And let me know, how, how do you organize your library? I'm always looking for new ways to do things and new ways to organize sounds and stuff like that. Anyways, go make some noise. All right, let's see those pearly whites. Yeah. <laughs>